Okay, I have myself a little 2D array. This one happens to be a four by three array. And what I want to do just as a quick refresher, uh, I would like you to start off by writing some code here to print the 2D array using the nested loops that we've been practicing all along. So please use the nested for loops like this to print the array, and I want it printed just like this. You don't have to print it with the commas or the curly brackets, but print it as a rectangle. Please do that now, just as a quick startup. Okay, Mr. Mitty, sir, can you help me figure out what goes in here to print out this 2D array? Okay, sir, and then what's the next one? Okay, and what goes inside here for printing purposes? So what's the name of the array, sir? Where should the A go? And I'm going to just pretty this up by putting some spaces in between so that the numbers don't all appear on top of each other. And I'll put a blank line in after each row is printed so that the whole array doesn't show up on a single line. So let's run this. And you can see I've got my 2D array printing just fine. We're going to take a little jump over to for each loops now so let's look at how we do a for each loop for example let's say i have an array of booleans so i'll go boolean so let's say i have this boolean matrix right here sorry array right here and let's say i wanted to use a for each loop to print the, these elements let's say i printed them one per line so can you help me figure out what should go here please try to remember what goes here to print this array one item per line using a for each loop notice i have a colon here notice that the regular for loop doesn't use a colon it uses semicolons here we're going to use a colon please work on this to try and figure out how to print these using a for each loop Ms. Sujan, are you finished? Okay, can you help me write this as a for each loop? What do I put over here? Okay, so it's just like that. Here you're describing what each element of the element uh, of the array is going to be. Here you're giving it a temporary variable name. So item is going to take the value of this item first, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, each time through the loop. And you, of course, have to tell the for each loop which array you're parsing. So this is the general structure for a for each loop. Just this is a review now of what you should have learned earlier in the year. So let's run this. And you can see it printed out the array just fine here. What we want to do now, uh, we're not going to need this. I'm going to leave this here for you to use as a guide for our next exercise. But I want to turn off the output because I don't want to get confused here. I'm also going to turn off this output because it's not the kind of for loop we want to study today. What we want to do is we want to create this equivalent functionality. See this functionality here? We want to create the equivalent functionality, but we want to use a for each loop. In fact, we're going to need nested for each loops. And I'd like you to try to figure out what goes in here, here, and here create the same kind of structure as here. I guess we're going to need another print statement here also, like that. And so uh, try and figure out what goes here. Here, 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 and here. Please work with your partners to try and flesh out this for each loop. We want to just print the array the same way we printed it here in this uh, grayed out uh, strategy right here, similar to this. I do need to give you one hint, I'm sorry. So here, you notice that we describe what each item in the row is going to be. We say here it's Boolean. You see that, right? Each item in the row here is Boolean. Here, what's happening, just as a reminder, that in Java, a 2D array is an array of arrays. It's an array of arrays. So in the first loop, what we're really looking at is arrays. So instead of putting double here, we need to somehow tell the compiler that's an entire array of doubles. It's an array of arrays. So that's what makes this part right here so tricky. See if you can figure out what to put there. Once you have this all filled out, look at what your partner has, then run it and see if you can get it to work.
This is a second hint here for you that this outer row is going to process, sorry, this outer this outer for loop will process each row and then the inner for loop will process each column. All right, let's have a look here. Ms. Mullen, what are you going to tell it is the first type of data that it's processing here? Okay, so you're going to tell it that each row, see here we're doing each row, each row is an array. And what is it we want to put over here? Okay, and what do you want to put on this side? All right, so that's basically what we're looking back for. So you can see this is a little bit unusual, right? And then what do we want to put over here, Miss Mullen? Okay, let's try that again. Let's run it. And you can see once again, we're able to print out the array. So I'll leave this up here for you to copy.